Hello Gophers and welcome to our new series where we'll be learning about test driven development. In this series we'll try to answer some of the very critical questions that comes to any developer's mind who is new to test driven development concept or test driven development life cycle. Those are like why to use stress driven development and how it will help me as a developer to improve my development skills or reduce my bug count per user story. So topics that I'll be covering in this video are why test driven development? What are the benefits of test driven development? We'll also then try to understand the life cycle of a test driven development. So what are the life cycle methods or life cycle of a test driven development? We'll also try to understand how you should structure your test case and what all you should avoid so that you don't end up in anti-pattern. Now anti-pattern means anything that is going leading you towards opposite of test driven development or getting you into troubles to not follow test driven development in the end. Now why to use test driven development is a very critical question that you should understand before you start with test driven development and you should know what all advantages will you get out of test driven development. Now there are few advantages that are listed over here which are debatable with developer to developer and there can be scenarios where some developer comes and say that hey this test driven development is leading me to extend my working hours or my story does not get ended in the defined timelines or there can be some some person who would say that yeah i my story i don't i don't have so much bug count in the stories that i deliver so why should why should i i go ahead with the test driven development but you should hang tight and probably listen to few points and in the end i have a very important point that actually drove me towards test driven development and excited me to jump into test driven development and start doing it so the first point is small regression suits so this is probably because all your code is already covered under unit test cases and you already have test cases around everything. So any new feature when you start implementing and you change something there, you already have a test case around it if it is being used somewhere else. If that particular piece of code is being used in some other module or some other uh, place. So you can get a early feedback so that your regression testing effort reduces the second second benefit that comes with tdd is it reduces your bug count definitely because you already start writing with the test cases so in test driven development you would normally write a test case first rather than a code actual code so this is eventually going to reduce your bug count because you have already coded your your test case scenarios that would be given to you by the test uh, test uh, testers third is clean and simple code now because test driven development has a methodology that is red green and refactor now if you don't have an idea on that uh, you can probably ignore this fact right now and we'll be discussing this in later part of this video so this helps in so if you see this life cycle that is red green and refactor so refactor is one of the th three pillars that test driven development relies on so refactor is like you after every test case that you write you would refactor you you are you are motivated to refactor your code so that you can write a better clean code or a simple code because after each test case that you write and you you see your code you you will have a better understanding to refactor it rather than you write a complete functionality and then think of refactoring it. It also avoids duplicate code because you would eventually know that this piece of code has been already tested and it is somewhere else written and you can reduce duplicacy. Refactoring, continuous refactoring definitely improves your code quality, that is for sure. Test driven development the design of your code the architecture of your code is very neat and very very uh, 
helpful for your future enhancements unit test cases are covered in very early stages now this is some feature that uh, this is some advantage that normally your managers would be more excited to because they need to generate that coverage report for n number of reasons now the last thing that excites me personally was it keeps me focused on what are the next steps or how to be more productive now this is this uh, scenario i can explain you uh, with what happens to me normally so when i am writing a code or a module there there can be hindrances where someone gives me a call and or some teammates ask me for a help and i would have to leave my seat or come out of that mindset of writing that module that that moment and when i come back i am lost what what step i was on and what all i have I've, have i finished now test driven development helps me because you would write all test cases first and you are focused on passing one test case at a time now when you leave your desk or you shift your focus from this particular module to another module or another place when you come back you exactly know what was the scenario that you were handling at that particular moment when you went out so this keeps me focused on what are the next steps or what is the current step that i am on so this keeps me very productive and i know exact steps in which i can divide my particular module or functionality that i am building now few more benefits of test driven development are in 2005 there was a study that was conducted on the programmers which stated that the programmer who writes more unit test cases or test cases tends to be more productive and focused now this is this is very similar point to the last point discussed in the previous slide programmer who follow tdd reports that they have to invoke very less number of debuggers when they actually give that code to their testing because because you you are writing your test cases first and you are just focus on passing those test cases first so eventually when your complete module ends there is maximum chances when you have already covered your your scenarios which which uh, had to be tested and they are already in place so you don't have to invoke debugging every time so there are less number of debugging efforts than uh, compared to normal development that we we are normally used to in test driven development you are not only focused on correctness of the program but the design of the software this is because you are first writing only the contracts just just to start writing your test cases you just focus on writing the contracts or interfaces first so before you actually start writing the business logic you are very you're very clear on how you would divide the module into smaller parts so that the testing effort of that module or that function is to minimum and you can you can extend those in time needed and the fourth point is writing more test cases helps in identifying error when in advance now this is because any change you do to your piece of code that was already present there and if you do some some case handling there in the existing code you most likely get an error with your test driven development framework that you have set up and already existing test cases if any of the scenario gets failed due to your new code so this helps you reduce your production bugs which which were actually missed out of testing or unit testing now let's discuss the development cycle that is involved in tdd so the first step is read that means you write a unit test case that you know would fail because the actual code for that uh, that unit test is not been implemented yet so that test case has to fail that is your first aim that write a test case which will definitely fail means that functionality is not implemented definitely now you focus on making that red test case that is error test case 
too green that means passing that test case so you focus on only writing the code that will help you pass that that particular test case that is red that is having error now then you go back to your code and start refactoring the code now when you when you see the particular functionality that is now passing the test case that you have written now you have a clear picture of what is the development code that is written for that functionality and you can go ahead analyze it and if refactoring is possible there and you can you can do some uh, code massaging you 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 are free to do it now after doing refactoring you again write another test case which would fail and then land up in green refactor cycle again and this you keep continuing until unless you finish off with the feature or the module that you are creating so this is this is simple three step process that you have to follow red green refactor that's it if you follow this for each and every functionality that you implement you would you would start feeling the difference once you you start following up with this in some time now structure of test case that is usually used in not go but in all languages across the globe normally so it would be first you you will set up the unit under test that is uut so setup by setup i mean if there are some dependencies that have to be injected you will initiate those dependencies if there are some input parameters that you need you will initiate those input objects and then you will execute that particular unit that you want to test now this unit can be a particular module or a particular function now once you set this function or this unit ready and you have initiated all all the initial objects or dependencies before uh, actual execution then you execute the unit now you actually start executing the unit and capture all the outputs now those output can be as a return value or output in the form of out parameters in some languages that we have after we capture all the outputs we would start validating all the outputs that we have received from the unit that we have tested and the expected output so once we validate if those are valid the test case is passing if those are not matching the test case fails now after these three things you would clean the complete unit up for the next test case now cleaning is important because there can be some some static variables or there can be some common variables that will be used in the same unit again and again and if you don't set them to their old state it is most likely that your second test case that gets executed would take into account that modified value now that reduces the chances of your test case getting passed on the on the second test case getting passed so every test case has to use a fresh copy of your state objects so initial state of your unit that is under test so practices to avoid your nt patterns now this is generally when you uh, the practices that you should avoid which will help you improve your test cases in your test driven development and better perform their side so the first one is having test cases independent of uh, sorry having test cases that depend on the state of the previous test case so in case you have two test cases and your second test case depends on some value that is been modified by the first test case this would have a bad impact so every test case should have a fresh copy of your state objects that is any input parameters or any common parameter or dependencies it should have a fresh copy of them as a initial state there should be no dependencies between test cases if you have dependencies between test cases then you'll have cascaded failure cases so in those scenarios if your first test case fails there are more chances of second test cases test case getting failed even if that is correct because that is dependent on the first scenario and due to that it gets failed 
fourth point is writing test cases that test more than necessary now this is like let's say you you have some class or some some function that depends on some other function so there is a dependency that is been used there and if you don't mock that dependency then you end up writing your test case that would also test the dependencies inside it but for dependencies you should normally plan to write test case for them separately so these dependencies should be actually mocked so that you don't end up testing every piece of code that is being used and not is directly under the unit under test show which test case is running helps this identifying which test case is getting executed and what is the result so normally you should you should almost plan to have a verbose where you see what test case is running whether it is pass or not so so that you you continuously keep getting the feedbacks of the test cases being run and it helps when when you have a long list of test cases and there there can be scenarios where some test cases are failing so it's it's good to have feedbacks continuously on when whenever your test suits is running Hope you like the video. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and do comment us below in case you have some suggestions or or you have some request for any new topics or videos that we can cover for you guys.